I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be commitments, vacillation, and indecisive men. Well, I've got two emails that I'm going to go through with you today. The first one is from a woman, and the second one is a follow-up email for a guy that I did, I guess about a week, week and a half ago. I did an email newsletter. It was called Submissiveness is Feminine, Not Masculine. This was the one where the guy was dating a woman who was basically saying that she had a, a fantasy about him having gay sex with an, another guy and her watching. And so he listened to the things that I suggested in his video and he made some changes in how he was showing up in his relationship with her. And some really interesting things have happened for him. But we'll get to that in a, in a few minutes. I'm going to go through this uh, woman's email first. Before I start with her email, I've actually got a quote that I'm going to share with you because it's a really good, good topic to go through. And the quote says, when a man does not understand the sexual polarity relationship between masculine and feminine energy, he often will tend to vacillate back and forth between being certain or uncertain of his relationships and their future, be indecisive, and send mixed signals to the women he is involved with. This will cause women to not trust his masculine core and become very frustrated, irritated, and bitchy towards him. For women to feel consistently comfortable letting their men take the leadership role in relationships, men must display consistent confidence, certainty, and be decisive in their decision-making and life choices. When they don't, this causes women to become fearful and move into their masculine energy, which is not their natural essence. They will resent this and become angry, as anger is driven by fear and not trusting in a favorable outcome. In other words, not trusting that the future is going to work out the way you expect. And so the email that I'm going to go through, this woman is describing a pretty decent relationship she has with this guy who it's better than any guy she's ever been with. But at certain times, he basically, to borrow a line from a a movie that Sean William Scott did, if you've ever watched the uh, American Pie movie, Stifler, this guy is basically acting like a big floppy cock, if you will. And so she says, hey, coach, I know you work strictly with guys. That's not true. 90% of my audience, my clients, are men. 10% are women. He's, she goes, she continues on, however, I have a question that only a guy can answer. You seem to give more sound advice than any other male coaches I have found on the internet. Well, thank you. I teach truth. It's, it's that simple. And truth is self-evident. It doesn't need any explanation. It just simply is. And that's why I always say that if you, even if you don't believe anything that I teach, if you just apply the things that I teach, you'll see that it works for you. She says, therefore, I was wondering if I could ask you a question about the man I am seriously dating. We've been dating for a little over a year now. Everything progressed better than I have ever experienced, almost like a love story off the TV screen. We are both in our 40s. He's 45 and I'm 42. And neither of, neither of us has been married, though I have two children. He's a perfect gentleman, wise, mature, realistic, romantic, responsible, always respectful, and so much more. This is important for you to know before I proceed. Starting around month two, he started making jokes and comments quite frequently, which were slightly uncomfortable for me at first and refreshing at the same time. Some of the topics and comments included, he would say, I have to ask the wifey when talking to friends and referring to me. And she also says, that one of the other things that he was saying is, where are we moving when I retire? He's being a big floppy cock when he says something like that. When are we moving? He's asking you to make a decision. He's not being the leader. He should be saying something along the lines of, I'd really love to live here when we retire. What about, what do you, what do you think about that? Asking your opinion instead of saying, gee, honey, why don't you make the decisions? In other words, he's asking you to be the man in the relationship. And that's a big part of the problem here is is the guy that you're dating doesn't know how to act like a man. Sometimes he acts like a man and obviously sometimes he acts like a woman. And obviously when he acts like a woman, it's driving you up, up the wall, which is understandable. 
She says, he's been saying this for months and finally around month eight or nine, I said I will not move anywhere with something that's just a boyfriend. I would only uproot my life and security if I was married. And she says, I thought this would give clarity to his intentions and he continued talking about us moving even after my comment. And she says, and another one is, are we going home? instead of to his house or my house. Again, he's asking you to make a decision instead of just inviting you to do things. He says, he also says, let's look at houses in the areas that we want to live on the internet. I've been thinking about my own mortality and how I do not have a son of my own to give away my precious belongings to, which made me think about your son. And she says, neither, neither of us want children or more children at this time. He also refers to his home as mine, like my or our garage, our knives, etc. He wants me to walk into his house without knocking. He took me on a trip to Colorado because he wanted to see if that is a place where I would like to live. Well, that's good. In that particular instance, he's being a leader there. So your, your, your boyfriend obviously is doing a lot of things right and that's why you've been able to, to fall for him and become attracted to him and stay attracted. But obviously he's doing plenty of things where when he acts like a woman, it's a total turn off. She says every time he gets tipsy, he will th say things like, are you happy with this? This is all there is. Can you live like this forever? This has been going on for over a year now since month two. Well, if he really was able to read your actions and read your attraction level for him, he wouldn't be asking questions like that because he would know that you're happy just as long as you're with him. She says, one night while on vacation, he was drunk and told some guy flat out that he was going to marry me someday. He even asked me what kind of ring I wanted. I was shocked at the time because it was so early in the relationship. Well, when people get really drunk, they tend to say things that are really truthful. You know, what's really interesting is I, it just reminds me of something that happened almost 20 years ago when I – actually, it was 20 years ago. God, man, it's amazing. I was, this was back before I married my wife when we, we were just dating. But I, I was like six months away from when I was going to move to Orlando and I was living down in Fort Lauderdale at the time. And deep down, I knew it wasn't right. And I remember I woke up one morning. I was out partying with my buddies the night before. And she called me. She was all pissed off. It was like a Saturday morning. And, and she said, um, she says, do you remember what you said to me? I was like, she was just bitchy. I was like, what's up? Why are you in such a shitty mood? She's like, well, do you remember what you said to me last night? I was like, we talked last night. I didn't remember because I was so hammered. What happened was I went to my buddy's. I came out and was hammered and, you know, I was snoozing. And she called me like 12, 1 o'clock in the morning or whatever, woke me up and I answered the phone. And I basically said to her, I think we should break up. We shouldn't date anymore. <laughs> and it just came out. And it is an interesting. It's like that was always inside me and I just ignored that and went ahead and married her anyways. She says, three to four months went by before I would respond or engage in these conversations or contribute to his verbalized thoughts. Once I did, he would get weird and jokingly or not jokingly say like, whoa, slow down. She says, it started some arguments because he was always talking about our future and making comments every time we were together, which is several days a week. There's a lot of truth in jest. And what I see here is this guy that you're dating is very unsure of himself. He's unsure of your relationship. And he's just not really sure how to show up and consistently act like the leader and be the man in the relationship. And obviously it's it would drive any woman bananas. It's totally understandable. She says, it made me feel confused and misled. He was acting like a woman. No wonder you're getting confused. Why was it okay for him to talk like this for the past several months, but when I would contribute to a conversation, he responded negatively? Because he's a big floppy cock. He doesn't know how to act like a man. More than likely, his mother was probably very domineering and therefore – he tends to vacillate back and forth between acting like a man and acting like a woman because he doesn't really understand the roles. 
And plus, when you see that, when you're unsure of that, and you just see that constantly repeated in movies and TVs all the time, men acting like women, and women obviously find it attractive on TV, but obviously it doesn't work in real life like that. You can understand if if you if a guy has a a misperception about men and women and masculinity versus feminine energy, he's not going to know. It. And when he sees it, all it, when he sees it on television or he sees it in a movie, it reinforces his belief. Oh, this is the way things are supposed to be. She says, I became very upset about the unfolding double standard, especially after we have been dating the duration of time we had due to our ages. We're not kids and should be figuring this sort of thing out earlier rather than since we're not in our 20s anymore. Well, one thing I would say is you got to be patient. But another thing is your guy definitely needs to clean up his game. And you know, when I get to the end of your email, I'm going to tell you exactly how you should say things to him because masculine energy grows through challenge. And so I'm going to teach you how to challenge him and get him to step up and be a man and certain things that you can say that will cause him – because people will do more to avoid pain than they'll do to gain pleasure. And so if you bring up certain – when he exhibits certain behaviors and he's acting like a little weak bitch or a floppy cock, I want you to call him out on it and I'll – but obviously you're going to do it in a way that's tact, tactful but also that challenges his manhood and his masculinity so he realizes that he needs to do better. She says, I asked that he not talk about the future due to this double standard. He agreed but soon started doing it again. His response was better if I contributed this time. Now the table is turned and due to all the seeds he has planted over the last year, I have come to realize that I would like to have a future with him. He's an amazingly wonderful and compassionate man, the most wonderful man I have ever met. Well, good for you. Well, all you need is a little bit of knowledge and understanding to interact with him in a different way so you can get him to step up and be the man he really needs to be in order for you to be feel safe and comfortable and so he can actually be the leader in the relationship and feel comfortable in that. Because the more he acts masculine and the more he takes on the leadership role, it's actually going to feel natural to him. She says, this brings me closer to the end of my explanation and question. About a week ago, he was joking around and kept saying, that's it, we're getting a divorce. He said it several times over and over throughout the day and I finally responded with, we would have to be married to get divorced. He said, okay, then maybe we won't get married then, which spawned the question for me, do you think that could happen Sunday, that we would get married? A le legitimate question per the topics, comments, and statements in his behavior over the last year and topic at hand in the moment. He almost froze in his tracks and quickly responded with, I haven't ruled that in. In other words, he's not at a place where he's absolutely ready to say yes. And part of it is his own weakness and not understanding himself, not understanding how to act like a man. He does a lot of things right, but he's not completely all the way there to where you feel safe and comfortable enough just letting him be the leader. You obviously have your walls up and you're a little bit guarded because of his behavior and any woman would react this way. She says, this could not have been a more shocking statement. He had been hinting, inferring, suggesting and blatantly stating things that all pointed towards marriage over the last year each and every time we hung out together. How could he have not ruled that in? Well, don't take it personally. That just tells you basically where he's at. He's vacillating back and forth. He's not sure of himself. He's not certain. She says, my absolute first response was that this guy is playing me. He likes me, even loves me, he wants to be with me and wants me to believe that he wants to marry me. But when he is in a sense called out via my contributions to his conversations or when I directly ask him, the truth is he doesn't think marriage or he's not thinking marriage or so he says. So is this guy playing me for as long as he can? I wouldn't say that. He just doesn't know how to act like a man. Like I said, he's a big floppy cock in essence. He calls me and texts me every day. He sees me several times a week. We go out on frequent dates and he pays most of the time. He holds a car door for me, sends me I love you's in the middle of the day, sweet dream texts every night, tells his buddies he has to ask the wifey. And on top of that, he is the one pursuing. He chases me at least 60% or more of the time. Well, that's part of the problem. He's acting more like a woman than a man in this particular case. I mean, what the fuck? I would have never asked the questions and if he had not done all of this and so much more, 
almost the entire duration of the relationship. I'm very confused by his conflicting messages. In other words, you don't trust his masculine core and it's totally understandable by his behavior because he's totally vacillating back and forth. He's acting like a woman that's unsure of himself or herself. This past week, I told him my frustration and explained how I was very confused by his flip-flopping perspectives. This during those discussions, he stated that marriage just doesn't make sense for someone his age since if something happened, he could lose half of what he works for all of his life. This could not be a more hurtful statement. Well, that's why it's going to be so important for you to help him move into his masculine and because the more he's in his masculine, the more you're going to feel comfortable because obviously when you get bitchy and you get upset with him when he acts this way, he doesn't understand why you're behaving the way you're behaving and therefore he becomes uns- even more unsure of himself and, it's, and that causes him to not feel comfortable and doubt that you guys would actually work together long term. She says, it was just like he said, I can marry you because your net worth, or I can't marry you because your net worth is less than mine and that makes you not worth it. Don't take his weaknesses personally. She says, we talked and I said that I understand his concerns and I told him how I feel about his response. He said he's not ruling out marriage and hopes that maybe someday we might do something like that, but that we would have to see. Well, things obviously have to get better between the two of you in order for him to get to the place where he feels comfortable doing that. I can tell you that no matter what, this is not the right time even prior to this conversation. I believe we still need to get to know each other. However, how could he infer for so long that's what he was thinking and then give me just the opposite response, making it sound like he is not – it's not in the cards to get married? My question is – as a man, do you what do you see is going on? Is this guy just stringing me along? I wouldn't say that. He just doesn't know how to act like a man. And I'm going to teach you how to teach him and help him along to get him kind of over the hump. Because if, once you get him over the hump, then you're going to feel more safe and comfortable letting him take the lead. And that's going to cause you to be more feminine, more sexy, more attractive, more desirable. He's going to want you more. He's going to want to have sex with you more. He's going to want to touch you more. He's going to want to be closer to you more. And therefore... He won't just talk about those things. He'll actually go ahead and follow through on them. Do you think he is just conflicted, scared? Yes, absolutely. I've never been so confused by a man's behavior in my life. This is far more complex than he's just not that into me and couldn't be further from the truth. I do not want to get hurt and especially misled. Totally understandable. I guess only time would tell but in the meantime, I was hoping for a little insight. So this is what I would say. Obviously, when he says things, when he, in essence, acts like a big floppy cock, when he acts weak, this is what you need to say to him. What you got to understand is masculine energy grows through challenge. The idea is not to tear him down and make him feel like a piece of shit and unsuccessful because men need to feel successful in the relationship. We need to be, feel like we know what to do and we can consistently make you happy. And he's obviously realizing that at times he's doing things that is not making you happy. And that's part of where his fear is coming from and why he vacillates back and forth. But he needs to clean up his dating game and his courtship game and his relationship game. And so what you need to point out to him is when he's acting weak, what you need to say, especially like when he brings up the topic of commitment, he starts vacillating. You're going to say, honey, I love you and I really think you're the best man that I've ever been with and we just have the best time. And But when you start talking about the future in one sentence and then the next sentence or the next day, you say the complete opposite, it makes you look weak as a man. It makes you vacillate. At times, you act more like a woman than you do a man. And that causes me to become fearful and not trust your masculine core. In other words, I don't feel comfortable letting you be the leader. And then when, when you act like a woman, it causes me to become fearful and uncertain of the future. And as a man, You should be the rock. You should be the mountain in a relationship. You should be certain of your actions. And so if you're not sure of something, don't tell me one day that you're sure of marrying me and the next day joke around about divorcing me even though we're not divorced yet. Don't joke around with things like that because I don't like it and it makes you look weak. 
And when you act weak or you act effeminate or you act like a woman, it turns me off. It actually causes me to lose respect for you and it causes me to lose attraction for you. And because I love you so much, I don't want to lose attraction for you and I don't want to lose respect for you. I want you to be consistent. Men are supposed to be consistent, decisive, direct, and go for what they want. So any time that you act this way, I'm going to call you out because it's bullshit because you're not acting like a man at times. And I need your best and I will give you my best. So don't tell me things and then the next day go completely against it. And when he asks you to make a decision like that, say, honey, I love you. But as a man, you're supposed to be the leader in the relationship. Instead of asking me to make a decision, come up with an idea and invite me to join you. Come up with an idea and say, I was thinking about doing this. What do you think? Doesn't it sound like a great time? And then I'll say, sure, that sounds great. I don't want to make the decisions. I'm the woman. Women are designed to receive a man's strength. And when you act this way sometimes, when you vacillate back and forth, you're acting like a big floppy cock and it's a total turnoff. Better than that, you're the best man I've ever been with. You're the sexiest man I've ever been with. You're the most handsome man I've ever been with. You're most charming. You're respectful. You hold a car door. You're very chivalrous. You make me feel loved. You make me feel appreciated. Tell him all the things that you love about him because the key is, is that he's got to be able to walk away from that conversation and understand. Don't talk around in circles, but be really direct because us men, we need logic and reason. We need step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. It's like you almost got to give us a list of what to do. And so anytime he acts weak, you got to call him out on it. And if, if you're driving the car one day and he starts doing it, just say, honey, I'm saying this with love because I want you to be successful and I want you to be successful at making me happy. But when you talk like this, you're acting weak. You're acting like a woman and it's very unattractive and I really don't like it. And this is what I expect from you. So if you're going to talk about these things, tell him exactly specifically what you need from him and what you want from him. Don't talk and round about examples and hope that he figures out because he'll never fucking get it. That's what I would do if, if I were you. Like I said, you got to call him out on his weak bullshit. And over time, what's going to happen is that because men, we want, he want, he's going to want to be successful at making you happy. And so when he realizes when certain behaviors, because it's the same kind of behaviors that keep showing up time and time again. When you keep pointing those things out that it's making him look weak but you're doing it in a loving way to build him up. In other words, you tell him how a certain behavior is inappropriate. Then you tell him exactly what he needs to do in order to make you happy. He'll want to do it because he'll want to make you happy. And the happier you are, the sweeter you're going to be, the kinder you're going to be, the more you're going to smile, the more sexually attracted you're going to be to him. And when you communicate these things and he can understand it in a logic way, he'll go, oh. So over time, you literally will be able to train this guy to treat you exactly the way you want to be treated because you're the one that's here getting help. He's not here getting help. You're the one that's in the relationship with him and I'm the one talking to you and so therefore, I can help you. And so if you can just take these tweaks and communicate these things to him in a subtle way, calling him out on his bullshit but not slamming him down and beating him down so he feels like a dog that got kicked, if you will, or stepped on. He'll still have his confidence. He'll want to do better. He'll move away from the things that make him look weak because he no guy wants to feel like he looks weak and unattractive to a woman, especially if he knows exactly specifically what to do because most women that are in this situation with guys, they don't know what to do. They just give roundabout examples and a few of the instances that I went through here in your email, you're kind of doing that. You're kind of giving them roundabout ways like when you say – well, I don't like it when you bring these things up and you and you flip-flop back and forth. That doesn't really help him. He doesn't he's not really grasping and understanding what it's doing to you internally. So if he realizes that when he, his certain behaviors that he exhibits is weak and it's unattractive, he acts like a woman, it's a turnoff, it causes you to lose respect for him and it causes you to lose sexual attraction for him, he'll pay attention to that stuff. Definitely. So that's what I would do if I were you. So let's get into the second email. And this is from a guy and, and this was the – I did a video about a week, week and a half ago called Submissiveness is Feminine, Not Masculine. This was the guy who has been dating a woman who basically – you know, she sticks a dildo up his ass when they're having sex. It's not because that's what he wants her to do. She was doing it and you know, he was going along with it because he thought that's what she wanted. He was being a pleaser in essence. 
And so here's what has transpired over the past week, week and a half since I did that video and answered his email. He says, hi, Corey. Since you answered my first email, I've had a couple of rev revelations about my curious relationship. First, and these are what we call aha moments. First, I realize that whenever I do something unusually nice for her, she winds up having a temper tantrum. Yeah, she becomes bitchy when you act weak. And he says, aha, first revelation. Secondly, I notice that the fantasies that she expresses during sh sex shift continuously. At first, it was all about us being in a threesome with another woman. Then, after a few weeks, she switched to being in a threesome with another man. In her stories, I was being cast in a more and more submissive role over time. Yeah, because what was going on is you kept ex exhibiting this submissive, weak, feminine behavior. And so women are always going to be testing your strength. They're pushing against you to see when you're going to push back and say, hey, that's enough. You're, you're crossing a line here. This is not working for me. But you just kept doing it and doing it and doing it and acting like the woman and therefore she was putting you in more and more of a position that was demeaning to you. And if you would allow that to continue, eventually she would have dumped your ass. And can you imagine a woman like this walking around laughing with her girlfriends that she made you – she turned you gay in essence and caused you to engage in gay sex? Now that's not something that you want to carry around. If that's because you know, he expressed in his last email that that's just something he's never considered and he's not into, it, but he was only going to do it because she said it's what she liked. Now listen to what he says. He says, but recently, her story is her story is shifted, and she pictured me in the dominant role with another man. And just the other day, she went back to talking about us being in a threesome with another woman, and that's originally where she started out. Isn't that interesting? So guess what? I think her fantasies reflect the state of our relationship and how she views me as a man. Aha again. He says, huge fucking revelation, man. It's like a Freudian dream analysis. Well, what I teach is I teach human behavior. I teach what men and women do, not only in relationships but in life. And if you can understand the roles and what creates the sexual polarity that draws two people to one another – it will not only change your intimate relationships but all of your relationships with your friends, your family, your coworkers, your boss, your business partners, your employees. And it really makes things a hell of a lot easier. Plus it feels more aligned with your natural essence. And for those of you that haven't read my book, especially the woman that wrote me that first email, I highly encourage you to get my Kindle ebook. And for those of you who don't have it, you can get a the digital Kindle version in under 60 seconds. You can download it to any electronic device or you can get a paperback version. If you go to my website underneath the email sign-up box, there's a link that is a literally an image of my book. If you click on that, it will take you right to Amazon. You can either order the paperback or download the Kindle version, whichever one works for you. And If you'd like to get my help personally with any kind of challenge or situation you're having, whether it's in your relationship skills or dating skills or pickup skills or figuring out your purpose or something's going sideways in your business or you want to get in shape, you want to lose weight, you want to take better care of yourself, whatever it happens to be, go to my website, click the products tab which will be at the top of your screen and just follow the instructions for booking whichever coaching option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.